Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electric. I'm Mikey G, and it's Wednesday, November 2nd. Reports of the Tesla Cybertruck production being delayed again are coming out in major media, but they're based on a somewhat weak report. Of course, the Cybertruck has been delayed since its inception, but the most recent announcement was back in June, in which Elon Musk said that Tesla is aiming for production to start in mid-2023. In its communications, Tesla has stuck to this mid-2023 timeline, even going in the last few months, and it started to become even more than just words, with actual production equipment coming to Gigafactory Texas. But now, a report from Reuters, based on two unnamed sources, claims that the Cybertruck will see mass production by the end of 2023. Now, if anything, the report would suggest that the Cybertruck production is actually ahead of schedule because the so-called mass production generally doesn't happen until a year after the start of the initial production. So, indeed, if those sources are literally correct, then we have some great news on our hands. Tesla has reluctantly gave a full self-driving beta demonstration to the California Department of Motor Vehicles and some full self-driving critics that the automaker didn't want present. Lately, Tesla has been under pressure from the California DMV over its autopilot and self-driving claims, which the agency believes could be deceptive. And now Bloomberg reports that Tesla gave the DMV a full self-driving beta demo just last week, and it seems that Tesla requested to be closed to certain critics. Jennifer Cohen, Tesla's head of policy and business development in California, wrote an email to the DMV head of autonomous vehicles, writing, quote, I question whether it is appropriate to include your consultants that may have made negative public statements about Tesla. We have yet to receive any assurance that their bias does not influence the DMV's treatment of Tesla. Tesla apparently had a particular issue with the transportation engineer who is in attendance, who previously called Tesla's use of the term self-driving very damaging. They also took issue with a Stanford Law Scholar who was advocating for more testing and more reporting. Tesla is looking to replicate the massive success that they had at Gigafactory Shanghai here in the United States. They're going to do so by bringing some help from the Chinese engineers to help improve the facility in Fremont. Tesla was quite successful at ramping up production at Gigafactory Shanghai, which became the most productive electric vehicle factory in the world at an incredible pace. They recently reached a production rate of 1 million electric vehicles per year. Tesla's Fremont factory is producing vehicles at a rate of over 600,000 units annually, but Musk has recently said that he believes there is room for improvement. This is despite the fact that the Fremont factory reached its highest production rate in 30 years, which includes time that the factory was not under use from Tesla. About 14 months after officially unveiling its all-electric EQE sedan, Mercedes has shared U.S. pricing before deliveries begin just this fall. The EQE will come in three different versions, each with varying trims to choose from, starting at an MSRP of $74,900. The EQE lineup consists of three different versions, the EQE 350+, Plus, the EQE 350 4Matic, and the EQE 500 4Matic. Each of these will have the three trim levels of Premium, Exclusive, and Pinnacle. While Mercedes has chosen not to unveil full performance specs of each version yet, they did give us a little bit for the EQE 350+. Plus. It'll come equipped with a previously reported 90.6 kWh battery pack, which can deliver up to 305 miles of range. In an interesting twist, the same Ford plant that was used to make Ford engines is now being used to power technology from electric vehicles that reduces the facility's carbon footprint. Ford is partnering with Convergent Energy and Power, an energy storage solution provider, to use lithium-ion battery technology with energy storage systems to power Ford's Essex engine plant when it is under stress for electric load. With an upcoming supply of used electric car batteries and automakers looking to reduce costs and footprint where they can, this could be the start of a new trend. Maryland's Montgomery School District has the most prominent electric school bus fleet in the U.S., and now they're unlocking the true potential behind these clean machines. They are partnering with Sea Power to use that large fleet of electric buses to provide reliability for the electric grid. Last school year, they received their first delivery of 25 electric vehicle school buses while installing the support infrastructure at one of their transportation depots. This year, they hope to deploy another 61 units. 
And since EV school buses run on a pretty tight schedule, they make the ideal candidate to use as a backup energy source when electricity demand is at the highest. Sea Power says that it will manage the flow of electricity to and from the electric school buses into the grid, reducing demand and also improving costs. The collaboration will help increase reliability for the largest grid operator in the U.S. called PJM. As electric school buses gain momentum across the U.S., Lion Electric has announced on Wednesday that they produced their first Made in America Lion C0 emission EV school bus at their Illinois factory. Until now, they have manufactured their electric vehicles at their Montreal, Quebec facility, which also is the headquarters and R&D center. With this site having a 2,500 EV annual production rate, Lion is expanding their manufacturing footprint to assist with the growing demand. With the recent U.S. climate and funding initiatives, Lion Electric is, as they put it, quote, well positioned to support school districts with their transition. They're going to be offering a complete network approach, as they call it. On top of this, several cities and states have committed to EV buses, such as New York, which intends to electrify 100% of their school bus fleet by the year 2035. Okay, it is opinion time. If it actually happens, I'll be curiously watching the development of making the Tesla Fremont site more like the Tesla Shanghai site. There's a lot of insurmountable differences between the American factory workings and a Chinese factory workings. I mean, who couldn't deny that? Actually, I briefly worked at a factory here in the U.S., and I visited several others, and I've also had the chance to visit a handful of Chinese factories. Although it should be mentioned that I was holding a camera, so they were probably on their best behavior. Since I don't want to be here for an hour, I'll just go ahead and skip the historical, political, and maybe even illegal things happening at Chinese factories, and instead sum it up by saying, there's a huge culture gap. I don't know what it would take to fill that in, but I imagine it would take a very, very, very long time. In today's community comment found on YouTube, a channel called Grays, of all things, is saying, the nonsense Dodge is doing is the same like vegans making fake sausage or fake meat. You know what, Grays? I actually think that is an apt comparison, but with the distinction of vegan fake meat rather than vegetarian fake meat. I've actually had a handful of vegetarian meat substitutes, and they were surprisingly good. Normally, I could tell some kind of a difference, but I still liked it. However, any time that I've done the same thing with a vegan substitute, it was something I didn't enjoy. When the vegans make their own food without trying to copy a burger or a BLT, then they actually do pretty good, and I kind of like them. But yeah, the worst food I've ever had was, it was awful. It was a sugar-free, gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan brownie. And I can't believe I even tried it, looking back, but at least I didn't pay for it. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.